Hello, and welcome to the first Keeping It Real of 2023. Uh, here at Keeping It Real, we talk to the most interesting people in real estate, and I say this probably every episode, but I am super excited to talk to today's guest. Sasha uh, is absolutely a killer in multiple aspects of real estate. We're going to talk about video today and the multiple ways that he uses that. But I just wanted to tell a quick story of when I met Sasha. It was like a video call. Sasha, I think you took the call from like Home Goods or something like that. We were talking about being oh, right. a real geeks affiliate, something like that. And you laid out a long term vision of where you wanted to take uh, your real estate career. And I thought to myself right then, this guy's got it going on. Uh, this is a guy that we need to watch and get involved in the real geeks ecosystem. And so, you know, I, been super happy to see you like get more involved with our community and you know all the content you've been producing and i highly encourage everyone to go check out uh sasha's stuff so with that uh we're going to talk about video today but first yep. sasha you want to just give like a little introduction uh for people that don't know you yep so guys how you doing i am sasha chapman um i'm a team leader of 12 agents down here in the dfw area uh, we're powered and broker by EXP Realty. I have, at the moment, as we're making this video, 10 agents in Dallas-Fort Worth, and then we have one agent down in Austin and one down in Houston. And so we're on a path this year to go expand in multiple markets, and Real Geeks is a huge um, partner for us to make that happen. So we're really excited here. I also run a coaching program, just I capitalize on the name, Coach Sasha Chapman, um, and we train agents every Monday at 10 a.m., that's free, so you guys can join for free if you like, and you'll have multiple folks teaching you how they do real estate, and we just continue to bring folks in to pour into people. But that's who I am. Married, got two kids, 13, and a soon-to-be 15-year-old. So that's why I am in life. Um, before real estate, I was a hospital executive, turned realtor, been doing this now for roughly about seven years. And last year, we ended up at $42 million. In sales. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's interesting that you bring up, uh, you know, your previous mm -hmm. career, uh, our producer, Sean frequently says, you know, real estate's not people's first act, they usually come from oh, some yeah. other thing. And uh, when we're talking to our, you know, coaches across the board, it's very interesting to see how where they started influences the way that they, uh, they approach. And I think that we can see, like your systematic approach in the way that you are like implementing things in, in well i'm a lean process engineer by trade um when i was in healthcare, that's what i did i was a lean six Sigma project manager i was also for finances so my job was to produce outcomes and create processes to make it work which is a lot of human intervention in here and so when i moved into real estate i mean we're in an industry that is so process driven but it's so process broken and i honestly couldn't function until i laid that out the way it was in my mind so I would really say that I'm a realtor second and I'm more of a process engineer first. And that's how I run the business. And I love that. And we're going to talk about video today. But, you know, the other thing that I was going to say about you is that, you know, there's a lot of realtors that do mm -hmm. video, but you seem to be like learning to master the craft. And so that's going to be the rest of the episode here. And I think it really stems from your, you know, process engineering Absolutely. background. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So you use video extensively in several areas of your business. You want to walk us through like the various areas that you have like kind of build content. I mean, everything. essentially video is a hundred percent in everything that we do. Um, I first started going down the path to doing video when I was with my previous brokerage, I was the tech ambassador. So to teach agents content and teach agents how to do certain things, I started doing video from that perspective. Now I would load that up on YouTube and we would send this out. This is how you build your CRM. This is how you do a video um, and submit your transaction files and dot loop and things of that nature. So that's how we originally got started was just doing it in YouTube. And that works out well for agents to learn when they're not able to come to class. And then I quickly learned, I, I want to say maybe six months into the business, I felt like I was just spinning my wheels here and I was having all these conversations and I said, okay, Sasha, maybe you're not as good as you should be in your conversations now because you're still learning your craft, but you can explain things better when you're not in the moment. Okay. 
And so I started creating content to educate buyers and educate sellers on how to sell their home. And I found um, a couple of tools from that perspective. And I was like, oh, okay, this is different. Okay. So, and this is pre, this is pre real geeks. This is important. So this is before I found real geeks. So I started down the path with bomb bomb at that point. And mm -hmm. I quickly noticed like in the, the drip campaigns that I had at the places I was at, I think back then it, I was at KW, we had e Edge, we had Playster. Let me be very blunt. The content sucked. The emails were terrible. They were not emails to convert. It was your 36 touch campaign that said nothing. Right? And I wanted content that would make people pick up the phone and call me. Then what's the best way of doing that versus creating content yourself? And so I started going down that path with Bomb Bomb and creating this really huge library. And then I put all of my drip campaign emails in there. And then I started learning more things how I could hack Bomb Bomb, right? So think about it from this perspective. Let's say you're talking to a client in the middle of a transaction and you know that client is not so easy with the contracts and not understanding. Start doing screen recordings and really explaining paragraph by paragraph. And what I found is that I was slowly building trust with individuals that I knew what I was talking about and I was willing to take the time to educate them, right? So it went from being content for one individual to one individual to everyone needs to know about, okay, down payment assistance. Everyone needs to know about the option period. Everyone needs to know, et cetera, et cetera. And then once I decided, hey, okay, yeah, I need a better, I need a better experience here in my CRM and my website. I finally found Real Geeks, and I started going down that path. And then when you guys introduce video, y'all introduce video. Woo, I ate that up because now I can start texting those videos out, and I can start putting emails and create several drip campaigns from that perspective. Um, and at the same time, I was teaching agents how to do this. So I just started building up a lot of different libraries, library A, YouTube, library B, um, Bomb Bomb, then Real Geeks. And then now I'm also using Kajabi. It's what I use to onboard my agents. I uh, do use some sale of my courses and things like that as well. But the really good thing is onboarding my agents. I mean, that's the big one. I can take what's in my head and give them this content and say, hey, guys, here's your first 90 days. I'll bring you in. We're going to give you tools. We're going to give you leads. We're going to give you resources. You're going to get your re leads through Real Geeks. You're going to have your drip campaign created through Real Geeks for you to be ready to go. You just need to watch my videos and then replicate that in your video emails. A. And then B, which is more importantly for me, if they don't watch said videos and that onboarding and get down to a certain point, you know, you've been on the team for a month and I'm not sending you leads until you fully, truly understand how we use our systems. So the exact same Real Geeks course that I sell to agents, it's the exact same Real Geeks course that my agents have to go through to really understand how we do things. And so when someone doesn't do that. Right. So I want to call out for the audience here real fast, like a couple of things that you've already said. And then I want to maybe rewind okay. you a little bit. So the first thing is like the theme of this entire podcast, which is like the way that you are using video to create economies of scale, to create leverage in your business. Because what I just heard you say was it started out as a better way to communicate with your Absolutely. clients. But then by recording the video, uh, and recording like sort of the lessons, it means that you don't necessarily have to give that same lesson over and over and over again and wonder if you missed something or, you know, you could, once you've got yeah. it right, it's a library item that then you can continue to use with your new agents. So like I would imagine that saves you a substantial amount of time as well as makes sure that you are delivering the best content to all the people that you're Absolutely, working. because um, not, so for example, I'm just not, a team lead for Chapman Realty Group, I mentor agents inside of EXP as well. I'm a certified mentor. So how do I mentor so many people? Well, I have content for them to watch. And the good thing about this, if you can see that they're watching said content, right, then they should be knowing and learning certain things. I'm not always going to physically be able to be there, right? But when someone's saying, hey, I don't know how to write a contract, did you watch my contract video? No, you didn't. And then some people tell you, oh, yeah, I watched yeah. it. I mean, child, I can see that you didn't do it. <laughs> I know you didn't do it, right? Or say, oh, I'm ready for leads. I get agents who I'll bring on the team and they say, I'm ready for leads. But yet they haven't watched our first five videos of understanding how we do things, how we set our expectations, um, how we use real geeks, you know, 
I, I have one video that's like maybe 12 minutes long, and it gives them the gist of the Chapman Realty Group system. Okay, that means how we use Real Geeks, how we use Bomb Bomb, how we use Mojo, and how we use Dot Loop. It's a 12 minute video going over our entire system. It's, it literally says the gist of what you need to know or something to that nature, right? So they don't watch that video. Okay. But then there's a whole library for them to watch Real Geeks. And what you find, guys, and when you start creating content like this, and let's just talk about consumers real quick. If I create content that talks about down payment assistance, um, buying and selling a house at the exact same time, or just um, why you should get a home inspection, I can send that same video out to pretty much everyone who's buying a house because I'm not changing the story up. It's the same story, right? We, we all know that these things don't change. Minor things change, but the gist of it is still there. And I, what I started doing was just housing that library on YouTube. So if I'm having a conversation with a buyer right now from Real Geeks in my Real D's and they call me and oh, I call them and they say, hey, well, I really want to buy a house, but I'm not sure what the market's going to be doing in the future. I have a video about that. Or I think I need to have 20% down. I have a video about that, right? And so imagine on the phone with somebody, you're trying to reiterate a point and say, you text them back, say, hey, I know you really want to get a better understanding of this, but I just want to make sure I share this information with you. So watch this video, and it's going to be me explaining to you how you really don't need 20% to buy a home, or this is how down payment assistance works, or this is how you really just stage Well, the home. thing that you mentioned earlier, which would have totally worked for me is like, you know, uh, details on the contract, you know, yeah. because oh, I yeah. think that a lot of realtors assume that, and I'm talking about me as a, as a consumer in this, uh, you know, instance, <clears throat> like, I think a lot of the realtors that I work with end up fielding a lot of questions from me on like, well, what does this part mean? And what does this part mean? And when we're doing this contingency or this part of the negotiation, it's like, they kind of have to stop and explain it to me versus, you know, maybe sending me a piece of content that I would watch at two X speed. Uh, right. And then be a much better partner for them, uh, you know, ultimately. Absolutely. You know, I, I look at it this way. Um, our job can be complicated, but you have to gain their trust. We're walking Absolutely. someone through yeah. the most expensive asset that they're buying in their lives. Right. And they don't know what they're doing. So yeah. why not use video to gain their trust and show your real estate prowess? Right. And I, I, I 100% love doing it. My clients love the fact that I'm educating them. And then let me tell you guys, for all those who do not have a drip campaign, why you don't have one, I don't know. Number one. Number two, add video to your campaign because all you're doing is showing them, A, your personality, B, you know your content and that they can trust you. And you'll love getting emails and phone calls saying, hey, I've been watching your content and I'm ready to buy a house now. Right? And they may or may not have even been watching it. And you'll like this one here, Chris. Here's something we also did. Is I, is I went down the video library of Kajabi. We created a first-time homebuyers course in Kajabi that just mm. walks us through. So all of our leads, we just subscribe them to this. Quickly mention for people what Kajabi there. is. Kajabi is a teaching platform. So Kajabi allows you to build courses. Content is really, really awesome. Um, like, for example, my coaching program, I sell my courses within that. Um, but you can give away free content. You can email out of this. There's a lot you can do with Kajabi. You can create really nice landing pages. Sasha, you're going to be doing a lot more in our mastermind group, uh, as Ooh. well as people seeing content coming out from you in our emails. And so, you know, people definitely like, there's going to be links down below, go hit those links, uh, get on the email lists because Sasha does these killer walkthroughs and we're, we're going to talk about video production here. Like he's got, <laughs> he's got an enviable studio that he's sitting uh, in front of and uh, oh, okay. puts together just some killer content. So um, let, let me pivot here a little bit because I think that you mentioned a couple different things and I want to, I want to focus first on, you know, for agents putting together content for themselves. Right. And I think that focusing on the nurtures might be a good spot to start. Um, I definitely want to talk about YouTube, but like in a nurture video that you're sending out via either automated or one-off, like what makes a good video? Well, for, for first things first, you need to be comfortable. Okay. When you make a good video, you need to really think about who you're making a video for, right? A lot of people get nervous about it, but what makes a good video is a understand that this is America. We have short attention spans. Okay. 
So TikTok if you're going to make a 10 minute <laughs> video, you need to know that person. My mother won't even watch a 10 minute video from me. Okay. So a keep it short, keep it succinct of where you're going with it and understand the points you're trying to make and end it with a call to action. But you have got to capture their attention in the first three seconds. So for here's a great example. When it comes to real geeks, um, someone coming down from my home, I mean, coming on my website, we do this. We get, a little webs- we get this little here going like, hey, your list of homes is ready because the first three seconds is animated, right? For anyone so, watching this on audio, he's holding up like a oh, white a sign whiteboard. <laughs> that's got handwritten, your home list is ready. With a smiley face. With a smiley face. With yeah. a smiley face. And so you got to capture their attention, A, to make them want to watch. So when they, so yes, be clickbaity. I give you permission to do that. The thumbnails on YouTube get you to click the video. When you're doing this for nurture leads, you need to capture their attention. Okay. So capture their attention. Make sure that the video is matching what you're putting in email and make sure you have a call to action for them to act upon. Let me give you a great example. I'm going to give you guys one real quick. If someone came on my website, they get this. Hey, how you doing? This is Sasha Chapman. I am the team leader here with Chapman Realty Group, and you just jumped on our website looking at homes. Now, I don't know if you're looking to buy a home right now or you're looking to buy a home six months from now. Just know this. My team of professional agents are here for you and ready to help you out. So if you have any questions whatsoever about what's going on in the real estate market, please feel free to reach out to me, or you can click on the button down below and schedule with me through my calendar link. Look forward to talking to you. Sasha Chapman, team leader Chapman Realty Group. Love that. And so it was short to the point. But the other thing that, you know, I I think that we all see YouTubers do this, but it's like an important point is like thinking about where the video is going to be viewed and what the UI looks like around the video, what the user interface looks like around the video. Because what you said is essentially like, hey, I'm a floating head in this like screen and this is where you need to go to take action. So, right, right, right. And I mean, the other thing is like, my team's going to get tired of seeing this clip uh, because it's like first three seconds, get their attention and follow it with a call to action. Absolutely. Like, obviously. You got you. Yes. <laughs> you. you know, in, in, in realistically guys, and notice most of these video platforms tell people how long the video is. So I understand that. Okay. Yeah. And if your video is creeping up to three minutes, eh, I'm not watching. that. Do I really want to give this person. I don't know this stranger three minutes of my time. Right. But if it says one minute or less, Oh, I, oh, I can do that. I can do that. So, and you can see how much of the video that they're watching, but make sure you're very succinct. What are you trying to accomplish? Let's say you have a sale lead that comes in asking for a cash offer. I'll have on here um, on my on my paddle for those who are listening. Hey, we're getting your cash offer ready. And I'll just say that. Hey, you asked for a cash offer here, and we are going to go ahead and get that ready for you. I'm the team of the Chapman Realty Group. Yes, we do buy houses and we'll offer cash for your home, but we also sell houses as well. So you have reached a full service real estate firm and one of my agents is going to be reaching out to you. Feel free to click on the link and schedule with me right now. That's it. Now, so so I frequently find that there is like whenever anyone is starting a new marketing channel um, mm-hmm. or anything new, there's this like breaking the ice period. It's like getting through that first hump. You you said, you know, it's important to be comfortable on cam- camera, right, but most right. people are not initially. And so like walk us through, you know, and maybe when you're coaching your agents, you, you could tell us, uh, you know, how you advise them. But like, if someone's like, well, the lighting's not good, or I don't look good enough, or like I'm right, having a bad right. camera day, or like, you know, I, I don't look like a supermodel, uh, you know, or my sound's bad. Like, how do you, how do you, ease them into being comfortable in this medium? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips. Number one, I don't really care too much what people think about how I look. I'm married. I got, I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the world. She loves me. I love her. We're good. Okay. So most people get nervous about how they look. Okay. You have got to put that outside of your head and understand that you're going to be doing this. And most of the time it's going to be on the internet. The trolls will come. And those who are going to like and love and appreciate you are going to be there too. Okay. This is real estate. Okay. Put your big boy pants on, get your confidence up. So that's number one. You've got to be comfortable in front of the camera. So how do you get comfortable? One, when I make video, I think about who I'm making a video to. And what I go back to is my very first client. Okay. She, my very first clients, they are in their seventies now. 
right? They're like my kids' grandparents at this point. So when I make a video, I am thinking that I'm talking to Mama and Papa T. Okay, so every video I make, if I'm trying to reach that, because I like getting people who like to buy and sell, and usually that's people stepping down in the home. I think about them. I make that video, and then when I think about when I'm making a video towards younger individuals who, at this point now, they're calling me Unc. Not that old, but whatever. Okay, you know, I guess I'm getting up there. But anyway, I think about a couple folks like my um, cousins or someone like that that I can help from that perspective. So get an avatar of who you're going to make a video to in your head, number one, okay? Number two, you need some decent lighting, okay? That's number. That's it. And you can literally do this from a cell phone, okay? You have a decent iPhone or Android. You can do it because the cameras on these things are pretty darn good. You don't have to go buy a super nice cam. I mean, I have one that I'm using now, but just get started. That's number one, okay? Good lighting, great confidence. Get your ideal avatar, who you're making that video for, and then write out what you want to say, right? So there's lots of tools out there. I'm going to drop one for you. Big View, B-I-G-V-U. That will allow you to go ahead and put in a um, a script, if you will, in your phone, and your phone can be here, and you can read the script word for word, okay? That's number one, okay? Two, if you have a style. lot of real estate knowledge, guys, just get you some postcards and bullet points. Top five reasons why you need to buy a house. Make sure you hit your points. Boom, 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 boom. Call to action. So you just have to be confident from that perspective and go from there. Now, if you start your first video and you start getting all wordy and you start going too long, that's fine. Everyone does that. You guys, you guys should go to my web, my YouTube channel and look at some of my first videos. Oh, my God, was I stiff. I was so stiff. I was still Sasha Chapman, healthcare executive in a boardroom for crying out loud. I literally yeah. was wearing a three piece suit with cufflinks and everything else. And I was like this, I look so intimidating. <laughs> so understand your audience is very key and critical. And when my wife got me to understand that, I was like, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. I, I love what you've said here because, you know, I'll add some like, kind of marketing guy background to this where I've done extensive experiments on social media, like doing different posts uh, and trying to lead people in like studying what gets engagement. Right. 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 And it, people engage with human faces. Like it's not a mystery that like humans like seeing other humans. And the, the tip that I'll highlight there that you said, which is like picture who you're talking to. Like, is it, is it your wife? Is it your cousins? Is it, you know, a client that, you know, right. Right. It, it actually changes the like micro expressions on your face, which come through the camera. And it's not something really? that you can fake. And so a lot of times when you you'll see social media posts with people that have like kind of those dead eyes and it's, it's sort of because they don't, it, it sounds like method acting or something like that, but this is yeah. like, you know, kind of method acting for nerds. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like picture who you're talking to and your, your face will come to life. Yeah. Uh, and let me just, let me just, it's a really great point. Um, it's going to sound simple, but be you, be you, yeah. because what, what, what Chris is saying is very true. You don't want to, because here's one thing I see agents do is mess it up all the time. I see agents who present themselves on their business page as one person over here and a whole different person over there on a personal page. Like the lead's not going to look you up. If I'm about to buy a million dollar house, I'm not going to look you up on Instagram. Really? I'm not going to see if you're out there doing crazy stuff and acting crazy. So you got to understand that if you speak a certain way, on one thing and then something it's going to come out you do not want to show up as a whole different person when they meet you finally in person and not know you because when i when these finally meet me they're like oh man they, they give me hugs like i'm trying to shake hands oh man give me a hug i've been watching your right. content forever sasha yada yada they feel like they know me i've this is very important i've connected and already built a relationship with them without ever physically meeting them so yeah. this is what this video content can do. I would highly suggest anyone who's in real estate get comfortable with video because if you do not, you're going to be left behind, baby, because there's, I guarantee you, there's monsters in your market right now crushing it with video. There's people who get all of their leads off of YouTube crushing it with video. And I will tell you, for everyone who signs up with Google Pay-Per-Click, especially with, through real leads, you can convert those leads, but you'll convert a whole lot more of these with video drip campaigns and content, okay? Video, 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 guys, I'm telling you, 
If you do Absolutely. that, it's going to change your world. And, you know, maybe here's, I'll throw a couple other tips at people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just to kind of like get some basics, right? Uh, we talked to Eric Preston a few weeks ago, um, yeah. back in Q3. And one of his tips was shoot in front of a video or shoot in front of a window. So yeah, I think in both of our studios, uh, we're having to overcome windows behind us with lights in front of us. But that's right. kind of like a more advanced thing to do, you know, so just point yourself towards the window. So the natural light hits you and you won't have to worry as much about, uh, about lighting. Yeah. My second tip would be, you know, if you're having a hard time picturing who you're talking to, do this, right? Like get on a video chat tool, like Riverside's a great one because it records locally in high def. And instead of like trying to do the teleprompter thing, talk to the person that you're trying to talk to. You know, here's something that we, we literally just did this two days ago. We had something, the 2023 aging content crash. And what we did was it was an in-person event and we had 20 agents sign up and come and meet us at a place called Selfie World. Shout out to Selfie World in DFW in Fort Worth. Awesome setup. They had like 20 different scenes. And we were just coaching individuals how to get comfortable with video, right? And how to create content on their social media. And I will tell you a couple of things that you need to think about when it comes out to making content. Number one, tell your story. It's the easiest video you can make. Why did you get into real estate? Yeah. Okay. Who are you? And, and get and, and be comfortable being personal. Like I tell you guys, everyone, I'm Sasha Chapman. I got two kids. You know, I love to play golf. I love anime. This is who I am, right? Because they want to know that you're a real person and not just a talking head. Number two, how can you help them with their real estate transaction, right? This is where you get to show that, hey, I'm Sasha Chapman. I'm a local agent here in DFW. I have been here in DFW for eight years now, and I can tell you the best places to go to eat here in, in Dallas-Fort Worth, the best schools you can go to, et cetera, et cetera. And you can kind of run with that of your knowledge in real estate and your market, okay? You need to let them know that, okay? Three, educational videos. Guys, educational videos about the home buying process, the home selling process. And then here's one for those who are video, who are nervous and super nervous, don't want to be on camera, go do some new construction neighborhood tours. Everybody, even people who don't want to buy a house right now, loves looking at bomb houses that look great, new construction, nicely staged, right? Don't I, I, I wouldn't show someone's house that where they live in it, but go, you go to new construction, they will love you for doing it. And just show the house and put that into a real. Hey, how much? And ask ask questions like this: How much do you think this house is? Right? What do you think of this fireplace? People will engage on your social media like that. And I will tell you, those type of videos when you send it out to your sphere and your um, constituents that are not constituents, I'm not in politics. <laughs> you send those out to your your leads that are coming through the website. Guess what? They like it, especially if you know someone's looking for a four bed, three bath. Five, six hundred thousand dollar house, like, hey, check out this new construction I just found. Yeah. Right. Would you like to get into a house like this? Keep this in mind. Once you shoot the video, guys, you can repurpose the content over and over and over again. You don't have to go crazy and shoot a ton of video and spend a ton on editing. Right. Even if you make a blooper, it's fine. Do it. One of my agents made a blooper and she actually failed and broke a table. Right. It's her highest rated video right now on social media. You're like, hey, guys, I just want to talk to you about what we're doing in the market. And bam, she's <laughs> on the ground. And right now she's got 60,000 views on that. <laughs> she's picked up three leads from it. Right. That's that's hilarious. Yeah. 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 People like authenticity. People like, you know, they do. You know surprising they do. They things do. happening. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so let me ask you this. Uh, okay. If you're getting into this, you know, you got your agent that's getting into this. Should do you coach them to focus on like this is essentially a quantity versus quality question like produce a lot of videos or produce like some precisely made videos because I feel like a lot of people get hung up on like perfect and perfect being the enemy of like getting things done. I'm I'm a big believer in uh, quality now. I used to, I was a quantity guy. I want to be okay. everywhere, do everything. And what's the point? You do you'd be anywhere doing everything, and you get like a, v a few views. No, and, and understanding where your audience is at, it's important. So for me, I truly believe that you need to make video in conjunction with what your agent niche is. All right? So first you need to have your niche and what it is that you're going after. So if you are in love and love doing new construction, do that. Talk about that. 
create content for that. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in going an inch wide, a mile deep, right? So if you're going to do new construction, do that hard and heavy. If you're doing probate sales, do that hard and heavy. That doesn't mean that people who are going through just a regular listing won't call you. They will. But if you show that you are this samurai, this content expert around doing probate or expires or FISBOs, guess what? They'll gravitate towards you. And then when someone understands, well, if they can do those type of listings, I can sell my house too. So yeah. don't be afraid not to try to make everything. Stay with what you're comfortable with and go into that. Because we know this in real estate. Everything works and everything doesn't work, right? It's about you and how you execute it. And it's the exact same thing for video. Well, and this is the other thing I'd call out for the audience that's happening here is I keep asking you like somewhat technical questions and mm -hmm. you keep steering it back to the fundamentals of marketing which is know your audience, produce content that they want to see, provide the value, get the call to action, you know, and it- Oh, and we can get it. technical though. We can get technical. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So hang on one, one technical thing. And then I want to talk okay. about studios and we were going to nerd out here a little bit and talk about cameras, uh, sound, that kind of thing. But let's start with sound because YouTube has several studies showing that audio is most important in terms of getting Absolutely. people to, to listen. And so- I would say that, you know, if you are worried about your setup, the first thing you should do is obviously start best camera that you own that you probably will own is your iPhone. Uh, and so start there, but mm -hmm. then maybe get a clip on mic and, or something like that, that is going to increase your audio quality. And then listen to those videos, listen to them in your car, listen to them in headphones, listen to them in other places and make sure that it sounds good. Here's my recommendation here. Let me pull this in. Uh, I DGI ones, right? Yeah. DGI, guys. This thing here. Let me tell you what I like about it. We're going to nerd out. Let's, I'm, I'm geeky. I mean, let's go into yep, it. Yep. First things first, I didn't get it off here. It has a magnet. So you can literally put it under the shirt, right? Boom. Uh, you know, y'all can see that. You can't even see it, which is good, right? So that's number one. And you get two of these, right? And then this transmitter, this transmitter here has a code shoe on it. Okay, right here to clip onto a camera. I can also put so a this cold shoe for people that don't know is basically it's the shape of the yeah. thing that goes where like a flash would go on like an old school camera. So this thing basically slides right on top of if you have like a nicer camera that's not a phone. Um, right. Or you can get little clips that clip to your phone that adapt like the cold shoe to the phone. So you would clip it into this little piece right here, right? Right. So that's what the cold shoe is. It. So it's it has like that. a flash. Uh, About like a flash drive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's where an old school flash would go. But the cool thing with this one here with the DJI is I can switch this adapt out and I can now plug it into my iPhone or a USB-C phone. And so now I have really crisp audio, okay, that I can just take and run with it. And so when I'm talking to an individual or I'm doing like a agent interview or I'm doing a video testimony for my clients, I just clip it onto them and boom, the audio is crispy. Even if I'm around with other people around me, they can hear. And this thing is so intelligent. Let's say something happens. It can continue to record even if it doesn't come to the transmitter. So you won't lose the audio. So that's number one. Um, I highly recommend it. And so if when I'm doing a new construction tour, I could be walking and doing that tour. And I'm just talking my normal voice like this. Because sometimes, you know, you got construction in the background or just loud echo and noises of empty houses, right? So definitely get some audio, number one. Two, lighting. OK, um, I'm a big GoPro guy, so I like to take things that I can take around with me here. So this is my travel size. It fits on the coach shoe as well. GoPro light. OK, so I have that. And then I have so a this big is one like a, take as well. this is like a half palm sized light that you can also like slide right onto the top of the camera or use any of those other cold shoe adapters uh, that we were just okay. talking about. And so I'm constantly taking this with me now. You need a stabilizer, folks. You gotta have some type of stabilizer. You can get these now for like anywhere from eighty to a hundred bucks off of um, Amazon. I, I'm a big fan of the DJI stabilizer. Um, you just get it, you hold it. You probably seen people holding these around, but I even have one like a little, a little, a little camera rig as well. But I definitely would say get a stabilizer so your video's not all crazy shaky and stuff like that when you're walking and talking. Makes and that it, creates the really nice too. smooth pan uh, type video have you played with the new gopros stabilization because they claim that this day you're essentially are able to get that level 
of stabilization. Well, but okay, so now we're about to get real geeky here. All right, so all right. now, now, now we're messing it up. So here's the deal. Let me, let's keep it real. <laughs> Look out, people. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I have to be clear, guys. I have every GoPro you could probably think about from the five, six, seven. I think I skipped the eight. I got the nine and ten. And so they're very stable. They are, they're very stable. So if you look on my YouTube, you'll see some of that. But I have graduated to a whole new camera. This is my secret weapon right here. Okay. This bad boy here. This is an Insta360. Oh. Okay. At the unofficial Real Geeks user conference, you were carrying this thing around. This yeah. is awesome. Well, no, 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 no. I'm such a geek, man. I was carrying this one. I don't level up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tech okay, head, so man. He's got a version more. Okay, so wait, hang on. I don't think we said what that was. Uh, All right. That's so. Go ahead. Go for it. So this is the Insta360 One X3. It is a 360 cam. It records both in front and back. So you have two cameras here. Okay. This little thing, if I put like this, will capture the entire room, and it is so excellent when it comes down. It's easy. Look at look how small it is. Okay. Yep. Travel size. So the stabilization on it is pretty good as well, right? Um, not as stable as having a camera on a gimbal. I'll tell you that right now. But what I love about this thing, and I'm going to do a video on this one on my YouTube channel, is I record this one video. It allows me to now record, take that video, and post it in the same frame rate for Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, even super wide cinematic. So now you can just create some really cool content with it. and. I mean, it's, it's an awesome tool to have. Now, I'll tell you, this is like video level 5.6.0, okay? So you don't have to get something like this to get started. I want to intimidate anybody. You can get off with, get over with just using an iPhone, guys. Get an iPhone. You can get a lapel mic, but I would still suggest this just because the audio is great and it's easy and you don't have cords all over. And to just get you started from that perspective. But yeah, this. So level one, yeah. use your iPhone. Yeah. Or. Flash or your and Android. Samsung. What, whatever. Yeah. I'm not an Android guy. Sorry. Uh, you need it. I mean, I mean this, yeah. listen, there's, there's the right system to have in real estate, and there's the wrong <laughs> system to have in real estate. I'm sorry for you droid users out there. Uh, just, now uh, now we're going to lose like 40% of our audience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here, I don't know, let me just say this. Real estate, that's an interesting question. Is, is real estate like iPhone dominant? Let me just say this. Here's how I run think about that, Chris. Here's what's ironic. If you're looking at desktop, real estate's all Google for the most part. Everything goes to Google Chrome. But mm -hmm. if you get on mobile apps, it goes iPhone. Super weird to me. Okay, no one ever thought about that, but it's the weirdest thing. Applications that go, go to the iPhone first, but everything I prefer to do it on Google when it comes to desktop. But hey, guys, y'all keep watching. Don't leave. Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, yeah, topic for another day. Uh, we'll have to come back to that one. I've got some thoughts on that one. It's, uh, you know, deep marketing stuff. Yeah. Uh, where were we going here? Okay, so step one, iPhone. Step two, lapel mics and you're suggesting the dji and those come in both uh, a set of two and a set of one the set of one was right. just released yeah. uh and then step three would be some sort of lighting that you can attach to that entire system uh so that you could just sort of improve the the quality and here's the other thing that i would i would say to people is like lighting is actually more important in some ways than the camera so you Absolute, can get a yes. really old camera with excellent lighting and it'll look amazing. You can get a brand new million megapixel like camera with the fanciest lens and you shoot it in a dark room and it'll look horrible. So yeah, lighting. Very Absolutely. Important. I mean, listen, if it looks bad, they're not going to watch it. Right. Okay? Yeah. I, I, even when I, even when I have, if I'm feeling bad and I don't want to talk, I'll just shoot a video while I'm walking through a new construction home or whatever. And then I can always add audio and sound to it later or voice it over. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to try to do this all day. Let me give you a couple of tips. Okay. If you have your phone and you're shooting a video, tuck your elbow in and just pivot and turn. Use that core, baby. Use the core. That's it. What kills me when agents of WL like, oh, they're trying to move the whole hand. And, you, you, you know, you'll give me a seizure trying to watch your video. Don't do that. All right. <laughs> keep it stable. That's, that's what the stabilizer is there for. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things that you mentioned just a second ago, and mm -hmm. I want to like kind of move into this topic a little bit, which is you're using you're shooting once and then carving up for different media types. So right. talk to me about like, let's say you're walking through new construction, like what channels are you going to push that uh, content out on? And then what are your considerations for like, are you shooting vertical, horizontal, like which camera are you using so that 
And and I think the thing that I'm trying to get to here is how do you maximize the most bang for the least effort? Well, I think that's that's a that's not always an easy question, but let me answer it this way. Know where your audience is at. If you have no audience on YouTube, why, why are you trying to do that, right? If yeah. the people are engaging with you on Facebook and Instagram, that's what you need to do. Let me just be very clear. Reels, reels, reels. Short form video, okay? So when I do new construction, if I go out there, I am most definitely going to be shooting in a vertical format. Right. And I was a big guy who did this on YouTube all the time horizontally. Right. But I, I get more engagement on my Instagram and Facebook by shooting short vertical format. Right. And people at literally hit me up. Hey, haven't seen the video in a while. I'm like, OK, well, I'm doing another video. So vertical for Instagram reels in, in YouTube and TikTok. I mean, OK, so understand the rules around this. So let's talk about number one. Um, Instagram reels and Facebook reels right now go for 90 seconds. OK, you can do a TikTok all the way up to 10 minutes. No one's going to watch that, though. Um, but you can go up to three minutes on a TikTok. So the rule of thumb in my head is 90 seconds. OK, what are the best things in the house I want to showcase? Obviously, the master bedroom, the kitchen, the family room. If it has a nice backyard patio, frankly, no one cares that much about the kids, small rooms. OK, you want to show where they are a little bit. Um, an office, a home theater and a playroom upstairs. You get that content on there, you know, and go from there, especially if it has a bomb kitchen. If it has a really bomb kitchen, you might you do different techniques, like start in really close on the um, oven, especially if it's a double oven, and back up slowly. Give them different shots to look at from that perspective. And so as you shoot that content, you can literally cut and edit that right there in their app, okay? I recommend a couple apps. I like Splice, honestly. Um, okay. I really love Splice. It's very, very easy, simple to use for anybody. And it puts everything in the size and format that you need to have it in for if you want a real TikTok or whatever. And it considers the, the fact that text is going to be in that little sidebar is going to be in as well. Um, but when I, I shoot a lot of vertical now. And the reason for that is that's what you're going to do for your stories. That's what you're going to do in your reels. And if you connect your Facebook and your Instagram pages together, if I put it on Instagram, it's going to Facebook anyway. So shoot vertical. Okay. Yeah, now. absolutely. And I'll throw another tip out there for people, which is uh, try, like when you, next time you're doom scrolling and you're just sitting on the couch at the end of the night and you're like flipping through, you know, Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is you're doing, see if you can like switch yourself out of that and, and think about the videos that you were watching and try yes. and deconstruct what got you to stop and see if you can figure out where the cuts are and how like where was the camera to show what they're what they're showing right? right and if you can start to deconstruct that then the next step is to go out and try and do it yourself and this for me this is a reps thing like the more i do it the more i learn absolutely and then, you know even when i have people working with me i give better feedback because i've tried to do it myself and and i would tell you just, just find somebody who's doing it well on your page and Pretty much copy what they're doing. Honestly, yeah. if, you like, if you like their video content, like, man, I wish I could do that. Don't do copy it. their video. No, wait, copy, don't copy their video, but... style. Yeah. The style, yeah. <laughs> I will say this, though. For, for YouTube is a little bit different. So let's let's mm -hmm. talk. Let's, we got to connect social media with, with the videos here. Yep. Okay. So Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok is noise, right? What I mean by this is this. You're just scrolling. Oh, somebody caught my attention. And now you stop. So you got to be interesting to make someone stop. But what you have in your video, it has to be interesting for them to stop and look at it. YouTube is different. YouTube, people are going in and, and typing in grants for first-time home buyers or something like that. Okay, so you got to understand the SEO game with this thing too, guys. Yep. But understand on YouTube, that's why you can have a five to 10-minute video because someone is searching for that content. So don't feel like you got to be super short on YouTube. YouTube is made for longer format video. Okay. And if you like, for example, if you shoot a whole video talking about the home buying process, if you take it from A to Z, hey, first you got to get pre-approved, then you got to go, you know, create a search on my wonderful real geeks website, then we got to get you, um, you know, out shopping, home inspection, blah 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 blah. Guess what? You you shot only one video? No, no, no. You probably just shot six videos because that one video you can now cut that and take those little parts and put it into snippets, right there. Hey. 
Or the first part about getting uh, about getting homes, getting pre-approved. Boom. That's, cut that into and, and turn it into a real, right? Then the second part, then the third part, then the fourth part, etc. So understand that one video that you make can be cut and reused and repurposed. I literally have my virtual assistants going back and finding videos I made from three years ago. And we find that they're still relevant. I'm like, hey, man, cut that short form it and put it out there. Because once you start creating content, you can reuse it, right? Especially, let's yeah. talk about new construction, guys. If I'm recording, let's say a DR Horton home, okay, or whatever, or a Toll Brothers home, they don't stop making certain models. They've been making the same model for God knows how long now. So you can take that and you can run with that as well. So you just got to think about how you want to do your video, get you some great lighting, get some, some um, use your phone and just kind of go with it and run with it from that perspective. But you do not, I would say this for social media, you don't have to be everywhere. You don't, right? How much do you worry about subscriber count, follower count, or engagement? Like what metrics are you looking at when you're trying to assess whether or not that video was on? Well, I look at different things. So for example, for YouTube, I use TubeBuddy. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at that to really get my SEO ranking out there. So you got to learn the hashtags, guys, okay? because hashtags are everywhere. But you also need to understand with on the Google side who owns YouTube, the keywords, okay? So I am looking at how many views I get. I'm looking at how much engagement and likes I'm getting because here's the deal. When you put a video on YouTube, you have basically two days to maximize that video. You, If, if people are watching that video, and they start getting likes and hearts on it, guess what? Boom, it goes. And then you got to understand what your audience is saying. If you go look at my YouTube channel, for example, new construction gets me good, lots of hits, but when I talk to real estate agents about the technical stuff of doing things, like real geese is like one of my number one videos, right? Or keeping current matters, that's my audience, right? I was like, okay, well, let me just take it and run with it. So that's number one. And then two, when it comes to face, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, it has a little button down that says insights. And if and if you only have your mom, <laughs> if it's only your mother reacting, eh, it's a little problematic. So yeah. there's got to be either something wrong with your message or something wrong with your format. Understand this. The thumbnail will make people click or pass it up. Okay? So I may make a fix like, right, um, I made a video about listening to your father for getting a home inspection. Like, really? Your daddy? Right? You, you, you listen to your daddy who can't turn the wrench. That's right. Right. And people will resonate with that. So be a little clickbait to make people watch and don't be afraid to challenge folks. I've had someone get really angry about that. Well, my dad knows everything. I'm like, well, what did, you, what did your dad do? Oh, uh, she, you know, her dad's a banker. But he, he, he turns wrenches, right? He, he, he looks at houses every day. He's, he's great. He's better than the home inspector that looks at a thousand houses a year. Okay. So, yeah. And so I, I love that suggestion. And actually inside this week, I think you're the second person to reiterate the importance of reactions and thumbnails. Um, so Real Geeks is going to be sponsoring Lab Code Agents. Uh, that's a new oh, thing for awesome. us. Yeah, I know. We're super excited about it. Um, and fast forward, Sasha, we need to talk about uh, getting you in there. Uh, <laughs> sure. Sure. But uh, uh Let's see here. I lost my train of thought. Okay. Yeah. What I was saying about that is they were saying the same thing. Reactions are super important. And they were actually, their team was saying that they, they critically analyze Mr. Beast's, uh, oh, that videos guy's good. because apparently that guy is extremely data driven. So it seems like he does these sort of like fun <laughs> YouTube videos focused at, you know, like high school kids or something like that. But that guy is driving all of his content based on data. And, and I will tell you this, you, you got to understand something. When you're making some content, you can't just be a stick in the mud. And I understand my personality. Let me just say that. I, I do well from an education standpoint. Um, but uh, I will tell you, a lot of folks will tell you this. When it comes out to making really good videos, you need to be engaging. You need to be entertaining. And you need to know how to evoke emotion. Okay? And understand the evoking emotion part. It's okay if you make somebody upset. Let me be clear with you. If they do not agree with your message... But if they come back and they're watching again and again, all they're doing is helping you with that algorithm, right? And making people watch it again. So I, I, I'll right. get some ones who really don't like this. And I, I got I got a video I made um, about um, stop bringing your family home along with you on a home tour, right? Especially if they never bought a house. Ooh, boy, I got some folks mad at me. I'm like, well, has your mom bought a house? No. Your aunt bought a house? No. 
Your grandmother. No. Hmm. 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 Because I've, I've, I've had these times where I've had individuals who have been very negative to that home buyer and mm-hmm. raining on their parade and everything. Like, think about that. So it made me make that video. And let me just say this. Well, you are, sometimes, guys, we need to make videos in the moment. Don't always try to record your wins. Be comfortable recording your losses. Oh, yeah. I got a video out there right now about how I lost 50, I think it was fifty two, fifty three thousand dollars $53,000 in two days in real estate commission. Ooh, poor times. I mean, those are the times that you learn. Actually, go back and uh, watch our end of the year wrap up. And mm-hmm. Lisa Shinati was talking about the learnings that she had from this year and, you know, kind of looking at the failures and, and recalibrating. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because if everyone, if you're only going to put out the perfect you, yeah. And I'm very comfortable when someone asks me this question. So tell me about a house you didn't sell. Oh, I mean, yeah, I can tell you that right now. I tell them about what happened. I can tell them what the, the story and what I learned from it and what I had control in that process. So no one expects you to be perfect. And if you're trying to present yourself as a perfect agent and a perfect realtor, you can turn some people off from that. Right. I, you, you'll just lack the emotional depth that will really like tie people to you. Yes. Right. And yes. so that's, I mean, that's the social media and influencers and all this kind of stuff. We can kind of come back to like the, the marketing, uh, you know, research that's happened here. But like the reason that those people are so popular is they're, they're real. They're theoretically authentic. Now we've learned all sorts of ways to manipulate that. But, you know, the reality is, is that the influencer is more real than like the magazine cover. And people Absolutely. see, you know, more of like the warts and the, you know, the weird, you know, mental hangups and the failures and the successes. And it makes them feel like they're a part of that person's life. Absolutely. And I mean, I'll tell you nothing that'll help you get comfortable. Bring a proper two. Okay. In the video. I, I shamelessly use my puppy. She's cute. She is click baby like crazy. She's cute. People love it. I put a GoPro on her back to do puppy tours and stuff. And people are like, oh. So awesome. So I, I'll get people who love that. And I, I use it in my listing presentation. Like, hey, well, this is one way I, I market a home. Hey, you ever seen what your house looks like with your puppy? And they watch this video and dog lovers absolutely love it. They just love to see the ear swap, right? With the GoPro. <laughs> and um, it works. So don't be afraid to be a little different. Do not be afraid to go a little bit hard with it. But um, video can save you guys in a lot of ways. Um, can we talk about team leaders real quick? Talk to me about, uh, you know, creating video for training. Okay. So when it comes down to training of your agents, guys, um, I, you can't be everywhere. All right. But you can take said knowledge and put that out in front of them so they can be better. So what I've did is I created an entire library, right? And in that library, it trains my agents on a, for example, how we do things, you know, what's expected of them. There's a welcome to the team, my onboarding checklist, um, I tell straight like I'm looking at my videos now. Don't do these things. My zero drama policy, my expectation of them on social media, all the way down to the schedule, our referral partners, boom. And that's what they have in their first three days of content. Then we go to the next couple of days. You know, here's a big one. Our core systems, right? The, mo- the most that you need to know about real geeks, bomb bomb, et cetera, of how to work with us. So as a team leader, I do this in a couple of ways. The first video that I have is my recruiting video. When someone says they want to join my team, I have a video that talks about what it looks like to be on the team, what are the expectations, and what our splits look like. And I end the video basically saying, if you come to negotiate the splits, we don't need to move forward because I'm not going to change my splits because I know the value that I'm bringing. Inevitably, they always say, when I sit down, let's talk about splits. Now, didn't I tell you we're not going to negotiate that? And so that's a walkaway point for me. Okay, because I spent seven minutes going over our team, our expectations. I've laid the whole thing out there, and I'm very comfortable putting that message out there so people can understand how we work. Do you want to work in this environment? Yes or no? Okay. And then from there, we put on the team um, these videos of helping them better understand. So this checklist is not just videos they got to watch, but it's also going to be different tasks, things they need to do submitting me a dummy offer so I can look at that offer and see how they write the contracts and I can gauge their level of experience and where they are. But here's a good thing about it. When they don't engage with that content, they get less of my time. Okay. I might not yeah. put them off the team right away. Some people they're gone. If they have a bad attitude, they got to go. If you're not watching the content and you're not doing it, you got to go. But if you are at least watching the content 
and I see you're putting into the business, I will put more time, energy, money into you. But for those agents who are not, no. So I will tell everyone, not everyone on my team gets my time and energy because they're not putting the work in. This is a way for me to see, are they putting the work in? I, I, and here's another thing, guys. Video saves you time, okay? So I, when I walk my dog, I may have a message that I want to teach my agents with. And I'm just walking the dog. Say, okay, guys, I'm walking the puppy right now. Let me talk to you about how you convert leads, okay? Follow the note or whatever subject we're talking about at that point in time. And I record that video. And it might be like a five-minute video that I send to my team. And it's just internal that I'm sending to them. So I record that one up. I got in bum bum, copy the link, text it out to him. Boom. And I can see, oh, 10 out of 12 watched it. Well, I know it's two. I know it's two probably didn't, right? One more time, I'm training them, I'm educating them, I'm getting the engagement. And I would just highly recommend if you're a team leader, you're not using video, you will save yourself a lot of time and energy by creating some videos for onboarding your agents and educating your agents. And when they're not engaging with it, you know where to put your time and energy at. I mean, simple. You know, and it's the same thing when it comes to leads, guys. If you create a really good email with a really great video and all you're doing is getting them to do this, raise their hand and say, mm, I'm interested. And you can track and see when these folks are clicking on these videos. You can track and see when they open up your emails and real geeks, right? So when they're doing that, now you know out of the 100 leads that got this email, here's my 25 I need to talk to. Okay, same thing with your agents as well. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, when you record those training videos, are those recordings of like Zoom sessions that you've had with people? So like are basically you multiplying your time by recording a session and then editing it and replaying it? Or are you crafting a purpose-built video to hold that spot in your kind of curriculum? Both. Um, we record all our team meetings, so that goes back there as well. But I am I, I always have a video ready to go. But it, like, for example, I need to create some videos about how we turn some of these cash off leads that we're getting in so they better understand this is what I expect you to use for, from a scripting standpoint, A. Um, here's the mindset you need to be in when you're calling these leads and understand that you need to be thinking about the fact that while you're on the phone and making that phone call, you're going to tell me you can bring on cash offer and you're going to try to set the appointment. You're not going to try to fix every issue right there. Set the appointment. So when I create these videos for the content, it is very much tailored towards what task I need them to get done, right? Mm -hmm. And understand. And I try to keep it short so I'm not blowing their brains up with too much information. So for a, a great example would be like, um, okay, for example, Let's say what I create a video around Real Geeks is, okay, lead input. How do you input a lead into the system? Well, I show them how to input the lead from the desktop, from their mobile phone, and how to bulk import. That's the only task we're talking about, okay? But when we're talking about lead management and how to update the lead, we're only going to have a video talking about that in itself. So the videos might only be, guys, two or three minutes, and that's fine. But it's getting them very much the task they're looking for. So then they can go and search in the library of, man, how do I create a search? And it's right there. Or how do I send off an e-blast? And it's right there, right? So you don't want to give them a, if you give them a 15, 20 minute video, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. Because now it, it, it's keep it very task driven in, in, in from that perspective, in my opinion. Yeah, you, you know, I'll add on to that. Like, I think that is excellent advice because you want people to be able to like find the answer quickly. And so if it's, if it's a three hour training on how to do business at, yeah. you know, Chapman Realtory group, group, then it's like, okay, well, where was the thing about lead import? I know it was in there somewhere, but now I'm clicking around now I'm frustrating. Okay. Now I've given up. Yeah. So I love the, the two minute thing. Um, I mean, internally, you got to keep in mind that they're, they're usually in the field when they're looking this stuff up. Yeah. Right. They're usually in their car needing to write a contract and they're freaking out. Like, Oh man, how do I use this in dot loop or how do I do this? And, have you used Loom at all? But that's another tool that we use. I have, to I have kind of used quickly. Loom. Um, I like Loom, but you know, because I had Bomb Bomb, there was no need for me to getting a, a whole other deal. Right. Um, I use um, gosh, what is it? Camtasia. I had signed up for that a long time ago. Yeah. I love Camtasia. It's a great editing tool. Um, but I use that from a screen recording perspective. 
I find myself doing the bomb bomb screen recorder now. When it when it comes to team, I'm not editing those videos. Like if you look at my coursework, that's Camtasia videos. But when it comes down to uh my team, I don't care if they hear me say, uh uh um hold up, wait a minute, I need to find this. I'm not worried about that with them. Yep. You know, that's that's family, right? They yep. understand that. And so I'll just screen record real quickly from that perspective. But when I am doing something that's going to be a long-term training for my mentee, I, I'm a Camtasia guy. Got it. Cool. Yeah. All right. I think I think we're probably over an hour at this point. So we, yeah, we probably real, should just like – We're at an hour. Put, put a like, hey, you guys, we're going to be doing more with Sasha. Uh, he's going to be doing a lot more around our ecosystem. In the Mastermind group, if you guys haven't joined the – if you're a Real Geeks customer and you haven't joined the Mastermind group, then definitely do that. If you're not a Real Geeks customer and you just want more of this – subscribe to the real geeks youtube channel there'll be more here go there'll be links down below to sasha's channel go subscribe to that um what else are we forgetting subscribe get on the email list uh because we'll be sending out more uh of the stuff that you know we've kind of mentioned but uh you know i don't know we, we don't have like a set agenda yet for <laughs> but uh yeah and if you have any question guys on how to use the real geek system in any way whatsoever feel free to reach on out to me uh, we help people learn how to use the system all the time. It can do everything. It absolutely 100% can do everything that you need, whether you're an individual agent or a team. You can just learn the system. Listen, if you don't know it, that's on you. But I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. And also feel free to join our free weekly um, group tr coaching that we have in training. Uh, we have Mondays at 10 a.m. Where we'll can they find all of your stuff, Sasha? Walk, walk them through where people should find you. Um, you can find me on, you can find me, just look up Sasha. All right. Just, if you go any social media, look up Sasha, you're going to find me here. Um, but you can find me on Facebook at Chapman Realty Group. You can also find me on Coach Sasha Chapman on YouTube as well. Um, you can find me all over um, Facebook and Instagram, Sasha Chapman and Chapman Realty Group. So if you go to any of those, you can do that. But I'm going to give you guys something else more special. I'm going to give you guys my Popo link to put down in the description. So if you click on my Popo link, it will take you to all of my social media. Right. So you there can we find go. Me everywhere. You get my, my cell phone number and everything. Right. So if you guys do need any help, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Go make some videos. Sounds good. Sasha, really enjoyed it. Uh, hope the audience did as well. Lots more coming. Uh, can't wait to do this again. All right. Cool, cool. All right. Talk to everyone.